And so then you get into this death spiral of like, okay, well, the only time people turn up is when you start turning on double experience weekends. Oh, no! He's got the shovel out. Like, he just keeps going, dude. Something that happens almost every time a new action RPG launches is people saying, there isn't enough in-game content. Jonathan's pulling out a machine gun there. He's rat -ta 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 -ta. Everyone was saying that the content they're making is like not even as large as this random POE 1 expansion that's coming out. He said the thing. He just said it. He just, he like actually just said it. There is a couple things that we got to watch. Let's see how badly I get roasted in this one. POE 2, the Diablo-like ARPG by our boy Frosty LaRue. He's back with a banger. He's even Frosty is making the transition from Diablo 4 to Path of Exile 2. Here we go. This is one of the strongest announcements I have ever seen in the history of ARPGs. Holy crap, this is gonna be incredible. Aaron. This is old school RuneScape. You okay. gotta play it. Okay, I swear to God, he puts me out of context in every single clip. Diablo 4 is bad, Diablo 4 is dead. I'm gonna quit Diablo 4. He clipped Woody out of context too. That's from Woody's video talking about everyone saying this, but it's not dead. So I, it's fine. Someone else gets cut out of context. Welcome back, you freaking yeah, traitors. Let's jump in and get to the major problems with this game. Unfortunately, Path of Exile 2 will not be available on Mac OS at the start of early access. Giant L. Yeah, this platform. Yeah, I don't think, honestly, I don't think Path of Exile 2 can ever recover from this. In fact, if we look at the numbers, I bet it even represents this. Oh, wait, Path of Exile is currently number three. In fact, number two, because number one is literally the Steam Deck. It's hardware for sale. It's the number two most sold game, and you can't even play it yet. Well, that sums up all the major problems with PoE2. Let's recap the tweet heard by literally billions of people. Okay, so I, I said this in the beginning. I'm like, I think this is getting overblown a little bit of a big deal. And I feel like I'm still right about this, but I didn't expect the floodgates of videos that were going to come out about this this might have single-handedly been the worst received arpg tweet of all time he's going to talk about the rob one obviously the general manager of all of diablo decided to go on twitter and absolutely cook himself with this unhinged take oh oh my goodness Hog's got the video. Hog got some content farm out of this. I saw multiple tweets and multiple videos. Okay. I wonder if we could normalize Diablo-like or ARPGs that follow the Diablo formula. I absolutely cannot believe that this is real. Let me, I haven't looked at that one in a while. How bad is the ratio now? Cause I mean, I, 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 it was starting to get to a pretty bad ratio at some point, 2000 comments to 700 likes. It's hard to find some person in here that doesn't ratio him. It's, Dude, it's, it's like the entire ARPG community came out to unanimously, cause this isn't just POE people. Aaron is obviously a last epoch Andy. This is a last epoch Andy. The dev who had tweeted is the no rest for the wicked CEO. I am a D4 and PoE Andy. You have PoE only Andys in here. You like everyone on all sides are like this is he's getting cooked unanimously by everybody by everyone from every category. Absolutely terrible. The timing on it, everything about it just looks really really bad. Look I can completely see what Rod is talking about here. And the term Diablo-like is already- I feel like that extra rub was personal, by the way. When a game you are super hyped for launches and it's completely not what you expected, that's Diablo-like. When a company removes a key feature, like a charger for a phone, then sells that key feature back to you later on, that's Diablo-like. Oh shit, that's actually kind of a, he's kind of cooking with this point. I know he's being sarcastic, but that's actually the best point I've seen. Like this, it is a little bit like the Apple charger. Like Diablo's not in there. You have to buy Diablo in the Diablo game. That's actually a hilarious point, to be honest. They owe a lot to Diablo 3. PoE kind of beat Diablo 3 and Diablo 4. Because a lot of us like D4 dudes played Diablo 4 and then went to PoE 1. PoE 1 at that point had beaten it's like beating the little brother and the bigger brother or like you bully a kid at school and his dad comes to fight you and then you beat the dad like that's sort of what happened here and now the funny part is poe 2 is going to beat diablo 4 and then diablo 5. they're building a precedent of path of exile 1v2ing 
multiple games in the heritage. Let's check in on some real loyal Diablo 4 super fans. Hey folks, this is Riker, and this week saw the most hype live stream the ARPG world has ever seen, the announcement of Diablo 4 season of The Witch Doctor, basically. No, obviously it was Path of Exile too. Oof, Riker's dunking on him. They lost everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna say this point because I really don't think that this is a point that matters at all, but I'm just curious. If we pull up the Diablo 4 category, how many people are still in it? All right. Something that happens almost every time a new action RPG launches is people saying there isn't enough in-game content. Nah, that's never happened. To be fair, that shot's not only a D4, that shot's at last epoch. Actually, Jonathan's pulling out a machine gun there. And he's rat -tat 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 -tat, rat -tat -tat -tat. He's kind of like just sending shots into the crowd, <laughs> to be honest. It lacks an end game almost entirely. Dude, I, I still love the way Rack says things. Like, he has a way of, like, look at the look on his face, dude. He's just, like, he's got, like, this thing. He's got, like, a Jim Halpert kind of, like, he's being nice, but he's actually upset. After a certain amount of time, there is not that much to do. <laughs> That's also my favorite. That's my favorite line, I think, straight up that anyone has said so far in the reactions of it. Like, he's, he's going slow because he's thinking, he's like, where are the words for this? There's not a lot to do. Oh. I get to, look at this. I get, I get a laugh about that line twice on stream in the same position. I need to do one of these. There. Now Frosty can use this in the react section. And then when I react the third time to his video, the circular farm is just still going. I'm sorry, I have to laugh. There aren't really any great rewards for doing that. I don't have any super awesome mounts. I don't have any titles. My character isn't. This is, this might be, ra honestly, I think this video might be like his Mona Lisa. This might be the best uh, monologue I've ever seen Rax go on. The rewards are just not there. Man, it gets worse. Nothing to do, no reason to do the things there are to do and no rewards for doing them. Okay guys, I think it's inevitable. I also need to try this game out and for exactly the reason you may think, to bring to light why PoE 2 is a vastly inferior game to the masterpiece we call Diablo 4. Diablo 4 oh, we got a song, we got a Frosty song. Classic Frosty. Can you guys imagine the Frosty LaRue video we're gonna be there getting about all the Diablo 4 players like watching Path of Egg? I can see the title of the video already. And the, the title was PoE 2, the Diablo-like RPG. This is 100% what I thought it would be. If you're not sub to Frosty Lyra, what are you doing with your life, boys? So there's a new interview. Interviewed POE director of Path of Exile 2 and the biggest issues in gaming. Now this is Legendary Drops. Another guy I got a chance to meet here in LA, as a matter of fact. I got the opportunity to sit down with Jonathan Rogers, one of the co-founders and the technical director of Grinding Gear Games, Path of Exile 1 and their upcoming game, Path of Exile 2. I knew I wanted to be a game developer from the point I was like 10 years old, right? Like I was doing game development like as a, as a hobby right from that point. So it really- And you can tell because of how much passion he has whenever you interview him. It wasn't a question of like, was I gonna be a game developer? It was a question of like, how is that gonna happen? We weren't thinking like we had to be the biggest game ever. We were just like, we can be sustainable if we have 10,000 concurrent users. So that's the audience we need to attract. If we can do that, then we- then Dude, we're... they went from trying to get 10,000 he went from trying to get 10,000 to currently, if you look at it on Steam, it is the second most sold game right under Stalker 2. The first one being Steam Deck for top sales in the US. So they are currently the second most sold game. Obviously, Path of Exile has been a bit of a standout success, especially like with free to play games, ARPG specifically. I still think there's not a lot of competition out there. Even, right. even you guys saw an opportunity. And I mean, we've had a couple of games come out over the last few years, but. Uh, nothing in the same vein. What do you guys attribute to the game's longevity and its success? I like that he's doing more like philosophy questions very often with this type of stuff. The only type of questions you actually get are, I mean, like we did a lot of like game centric, like very specific types of questions. But this interview seems like it's going to be like a history breakdown, philosophy, you know, more of a, uh, an overview, which I like. There were kind of like five pillars to make a good action RPG. Okay, like there are people who have some of these, but there's no other game that has all of them except for Diablo 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the first one would be, well, I mean, in, in no particular order, you've got uh, random level generation. Yep. For longevity, you just need to have it. You need to have it. I mean, you need to do it well. Because if you don't have that, I mean, look, things are just going to get boring very quickly. You've just played through the same thing a thousand times. I mean, obviously, even with random level generation, that can still happen, but it takes a lot longer. Uh, the next thing is a secure online economy. So effectively, you have to have the ability to trade items, 
and it has to be secure in the sense that nobody can dupe them. There's no cheats. There's nothing like that. Yeah, this has happened in every other ARPG I have played in the last two years has had a dupe in every single season. Last Epoch had dupes. D4 had dupes. They all had dupes. Actually, now that I think about it, Path of Exile is the only one that has not had dupes. Like, that's really important for that long-term feeling because it makes the stuff that you find feel like it has value. The item system has to have elements of chance and it has to be that anything you kill could be the thing that could drop the next amazing thing that you need to find. So in practice, since we launched, we have also added more deterministic things as well, which I think do have a place. But you certainly need, like, the... It needs to be that just killing any random monster could be the one that drops, like, the amazing item. Like, you still need that feeling all yeah. the time. If this you... is actually the part that I hope is the biggest change with PoE 2. The only time I ever feel like I get a giga item drop is it's either a fracture with a tier 1, like, spell suppress, or it's a unique item that's, like, super rare, like, headhunter or mage blood or something. And those are the only times I'm feeling like I'm getting a giga drop other than, like, divine orb splash or something. So... If I had to pick like one major change for PoE2 that I hope ends up the way that we're all hoping it will be, it will be that the items themselves, you have the chance to get like just a really good rare item just like straight up drop basically and you end up using them. I understand the chance exists in Path of Exile, but like it's not really a realistic thing. You have to like craft and all that. And arguably if you have something that doesn't have slots available, like it's worse than if it, if it had one less slot available. If you don't have that, then what happens is, is that you see, then uh, you finish a grind and then the next giant grind is like stretching out ahead of you. And if like, if you don't think you're going to get any rewardingness until the point where you finish that, that's a good moment that you might choose to quit. So it's actually one of those things that is, is, is really important as well. Yeah. Um, the next one is, is you need action combat as opposed to the kind of more MMO style combat that you had back then, which was like very like, you know, like just everything's on cooldown, like you have a million abilities and it's just kind of like one thing after the other. That sort of cooldown rotation, like sort of slower paced combat that you had from the MMOs at the time. And so effectively you need enough depth in the way that you build your characters to make it so that you're willing to play through the same game again, but with a different build so that that can still be interesting to you. So those are kind of the like five pillars that we have. Um, so a lot of companies are doing seasonal content now. The thing that after they do the first one that players will always say is, oh, we want you to have some way to skip the campaign. We want to have some way to like, you know, to yeah. blah, blah, blah. Keep... Right. Yeah, I feel like skipping the campaign would actually be a mistake. I feel like the Path of Exile campaign people hate to do, but it feels like a notable part of the game. How do I put this in RuneScape terms since it's the only thing I understand in my life? I, it, it's like doing Monkey Madness. No one likes the quest, but it's like a staple you have to do to get like past mid game but i think it's actually ultimately long term very harmful because it means that like when, when you have a full economic reset it means that new players can join your game and not feel like they're behind everyone physically speaking everyone yeah. who starts a part of exile league ha is on the same playing field ex apart from what they know about the game so I think that's super important. Part of the reason I don't log in that WoW anymore is I feel like there's a bajillion systems I have to relearn. And part of the reason that I want to re-log into Classic WoW with the refresh server is that everyone's on the same page and we're all like, like it has the new economy, the new player base, like everyone's low level again. That's just like a huge percentage of it. I feel like if you don't have this reset, because I feel like at the beginning of games, like MMOs and RPGs, etc., almost always feel the most fun. In-game, when you're blasting, it's cool from a power structure, but, like, the progress of getting there and building your character is a lot of times what ropes people into the game. And everyone wants to relive their first experience. Everyone remembers their first time, right? It's this... It's... It's like making a RuneScape account again for me. You know, I want to I want to go and be Dragon Slayer and do all like the beginning things. It's like kind of fun. And I think it's the same thing with the RPGs. You get constantly relive, not nostalgia, but something similar to that, akin to nostalgia. Like you get the opportunity to replay building out your character. But this time, because you've had the history of doing it maybe in a few previous seasons, you get to make the changes. You're like, you get to look back and be like, okay, well, I should have done this that time. And you actually get to make that change and see what that timeline would have looked like with, with the knowledge that now you've acquired. I, I like that. I think that's a huge part of the reason. Right, right. Why did you guys mm -hmm. choose to make a second game making PoE 2? And also, why did you choose to support both? It's funny because we kind of creeped towards it in a strange way. The plan literally was, okay, we need to visually update by the Excel 1. But there was a very specific thing that was that was the big problem at the time. The rigs for the for the player characters. We were like, okay, these rigs are from 2006. We also, every player character had its own rig, which means that we were doing seven times the amount of work to support everything that we, that we should have needed to do. There were just so many problems with them. So like, okay, in order to make the graphics of uh, PoE 1 better, we're going to have to change these rigs. We make new rigs and we're like, okay, now we're going to have to re-rig all the armors. But if instead of re-rigging armors, like, surely we should visually update the armors instead of, re of, of, of just re-rigging the old ones, right? And thank God they did because the visual 
shows, I think, are crucial for bringing in newer players looking at the game. And also, it's not that I thought Path of Exile armor looked bad. Like, I didn't actively look at my character and think I look like a clown like I do in, like, WoW sometimes when I am wearing gear. However, that being said, I never looked at my character and thought, wow, I look really cool with base gear. But in Path of Exile 2, the gear that they've shown and the gear that I've worn only going through Act 2, I actually think I kind of look like a badass with literally no microtransactions. Like, I actually think you look like like pretty decent already effectively like we just kept on like more and more things kind of like got added and added as like you know and effectively it at just some turned point, into like, a okay. new game <laughs> yeah so it sort of did like that and so when we even announced path of exile 2 yeah. we announced it as like okay we're gonna have two campaigns because at that point we decided to redo the whole campaign we're gonna have two campaigns but it's gonna have a shared end game so that it's like effectively still the same game and that was kind of what we announced initially in 2019 point when it really split into two games was the point when i started wanting to make some much more serious changes to gameplay feel and to to, to balance and so on See, he, this LD is doing a great job of asking questions. He's kind of getting into the, like, typically what happens is we get in these interviews and every time we get in these interviews, I feel like this pressure to make sure I ask a lot of questions that might reveal like mechanical information related to the game because that's what people typically really want. So I feel this like, not like necessity, but I feel like this, you know, desire to fulfill what the community wants to see, which is typically like content, content, you know, et cetera, et cetera. However, I like to ask their philosophy questions instead of just like sit there and rattle off info. You kind of like get a, get them out of a shell a little bit talking about the actual process of creating the company, et cetera. So these are great questions. I'm loving this interview. Yo, thanks for the prime. You're loving all these interviews. Me too. Cause like it, one, it's drip feeding us everything we need going into being able to go into december 6th here because it's stall vember two is everyone is kind of asking like their own questions like ld is obviously about game ethics and he likes the concepts of games so he's kind of going the more like deeper philosophical type of shit which is fantastic to watch and then i'm curious to see where talkative goes with it like is he going to go the same way or is he going to is he going to go more like mechanic based all these interviews are great because everyone's kind of got like their own vein they're really interested in see so we're getting like a very wide spectrum of information i cannot believe jonathan is willing to do this many interviews in a row from my perspective this game feels like a true evolution in the genre it's the pacing the comedy. completely agree i completely agree with them my take is this is the next true like next gen like it's it's the first true next generation arpg that is essentially my take path of exile is looking like the first true next gen RPG. i posted this right after watching the the reveal because i you look at it and it's got everything it's got visuals it's got content the worst case scenario is the six common there's just like crashes and issues and duplications and it's just a mess but my hype and hopium copium is so high at a level that it's 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 breaching so I think all of ours kind of are. What were you guys trying to accomplish with this? It does feel like an evolution. It doesn't play like any other ARPG I've played before. So it really was an effort to make that combat feel just like, yeah, just, just much better. And whenever we launch a, a Path of Exile 1 expansion, it's always very interesting to see what people say outside of the Path of Exile community. Usually the top comment will be like, oh, you know, I tried this, but the combat feels so dated and bad and all that sort of Oh shit, call them out, dude. Call them out. Dro name drop, Jonathan. Give us content for a week right now. Give us all React Andy some shit talk for like a week. It's interesting to see what it is that people who don't play PoE dislike about PoE because that's a very interesting thing to think, okay, this is the stuff that we can potentially improve. I just wanted to make something that to me felt like a decent action game. If your character is weaker, you can overcome some degree of that in PoE 2 with play skill. But then at the same time, if you are if you if you don't have as much play skill, you also can overcome some of that by getting more stats and doing more grinding. Okay, so that is a different answer compared to like, did you guys watch Rax's interview with the Diablo 4 devs, for instance. During that interview, basically the same question or same conversation happens in which Rask, Rax asked, is there ever going to be a point in which bosses and things are created that our, our skill can overcome the necessity for gear? And in that conversation, the answer was basically no. It's a different, it's a different type of take. So ideally, we can kind of get the best of both of those worlds. But um, yeah, I mean, it really just comes down to, I'm an action game fan. I want us to be good on the level of an action game. Is it me or encountering bosses in PoE 2 in-game sound far too punishing? How are we supposed to learn in-game bosses when we can't even re-attempt them within a reasonable time? I think you, you can make that argument, sure. I think you could also make the argument, how can you expect an in-game boss to be super challenging and to be something that gives you the feeling of completion afterwards if you're given as many attempts in a row as you need in order to be able to beat it. I love the one attempt bosses and maps and makes decisions and player skill matter. You know what makes me like that? 
maybe you know you can make the argument it's it's challenging and you know maybe i'd agree with you but i i think what i like about that is you know the concept of like like feeling nervous before you go into a boss fight like if you're hardcore or something you're starting to like get a little bit of heart palpitation like oh i kind of want to fuck this one up like the sense of like nervousness i think gives a sense of weight to the interaction and so having that ability to lose something can give you the ability to gain something. I think this is the same thing uh, in things like Bricking Gear. This is part of the reason I like gear in PoE 1, is your ability to basically ruin a piece of gear should actually, you know, give you the opportunity to have something truly rewarding. You know, I guess, anxiety equal more dopamine. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean... Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, the nervousness of, of like, not wanting to fuck something up. Do I want that nervousness from a video game? Depends upon the video game. You might not want it in Animal Crossing, but you might want it in games like The Dark Descent. So it really depends upon the game. I would argue that in games that have reward features, you know, rewards can often be weighted by punishment in order to make them more exciting. Adding that is actually... Uh, improved the experience, I think, quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, Jesus you get dude, man, he is getting, dude, I, he's getting one v one by a fly right now, dude. He just can't get away from it. What? Just go away. <laughs> it's like, okay. You know, the fly's uh, yeah, still on him, dude. He can't, he can't shake it. It's right but, here. Uh, like, the other thing as well, is, like, you. Jesus Christ. dude, fly, the fly is actually fucking up this interview, dude. He's, he's. This is how I imagine me when I'm trying to find my Uber bosses. It's just like, this is a fucking fly. Get him out of here. And just like swats me away. And then I like come back. I'm here with my ZDPS. Come on. Uppercut. He's like, good. Uh, when was the last um, time you left the office, man? <laughs> the, the other thing as well, though, is it really just to, um, <laughs> create a lot more of that side content throughout the game as well. They're still sort of bosses. I think if you look at a lot of games, you, you would still consider them to be bosses. But effectively, they're like hard-coded rare monsters that have specific abilities. And a lot of the time, what we've done is we've taken things from like later in the game and moved them earlier to use them as like a, a boss and that sort of area, things like that. So, for example, I don't know if in the forest you found that 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 witch in the witch's hut. Yes. Um, was that a thing you found? Yeah. You did? Yeah. All right. That's okay, so this that. witch, I showed the footage yesterday. The I, I went almost directly straight to the way I, I was trying to speed run through the shit and I walked into the thing. I was like, oh, what's this? And I clicked on it and the witch showed up and immediately shit on me. I had to go level up and then come back to get the witch. Like, because I it was almost one of the first mods. Like, I, I pretty much straight shot straight to the witch and got absolutely shit on. So that so that witch actually comes from Act 5. Um, we added this, like, frost br breath ability. Yeah, and, yeah, which shit uh, on me. And, like, you know, added a little bit of stuff around. Like, you know, you walk in and there's the cauldron and then she disappears and goes behind you. And, yep. like, you know, a few things like that. And it's like, really quickly, we were able to create a little encounter like that. And if you're in Act 1... A random Act 5 regular monster feels like a boss to you. We've kind of done little things like that all over the place. Just like little touches that add, you know, that, that just make the game, game world feel a lot more alive. When I actually finally got to the end game for the first time, I was yet again lost. And my only, <laughs> my only solution was like two or three hour guides from, you know, Zizrain or somebody uh, like that. Right? And I'm like, I love that anytime someone brings up like a guide, everyone just throws out the name Zizrain. I do the same shit where it's like, ah, you're like, ah, Zizrain. The dude has managed to like, like have the brand of like, anytime you want anything answered, ah, Zizrain. That's literally like the best possible brand you could have for the ARPG. It's just the answer to everything is just Google Zizrain. No. Rex is getting there you as well i will never be there i'm not the answer to you're looking for a guide no one says dm if you're looking for a guide if you're looking for recaps news drama and entertainment and maybe you want to giggle that's dm has anyone noticed okay there's one there's something that's happened in this interview that's crucially important so far has anyone noticed it it just happened in the last few minutes the fly is gone fly gone yep there you go it's the fly the fly is like you know what nice job boys nice job Congratulations, everybody. You have unlocked a random event. I am now going to give away 20 gift subs. Good luck. Incoming. Boom. Who got those ones? Fly guy got one. Wait, hold on. Is there literally a guy named Fly in here? Fly guy? He's everywhere. What do you guys think is the key to maintaining long-term engagement that you guys see with Path of Exile? Our just general view on maintaining a game, and I think this is something that the industry is more generally coming towards now, but only in the more recent years, is coming to the understanding that you don't want to keep players around forever. You want to 
give players a good experience that they're going to enjoy for, you know, like a few weeks, a month, maybe six weeks, something like that, you know, like some amount of time that's like bounded. And then you're happy to see them go to play other things in the knowledge that they're going to come back again later. That's the crucial part. In the knowledge that they're going to come back. Like, you don't have to hang on to players forever. In the mobile world, for some reason, I feel like they still treat players very much this way, that it's all about, like, they want to try and keep players forever. Well, uh, yeah, there's login rewards. There's constant banners. There's events. Like, you, you have to log in every day. Trust me, I have been in the mobile world a lot. When you're in the mobile world, the second you stop logging in, you don't give a fuck about the game. Like, if you don't log into a mobile game for three days in a row, you're done with it. Like almost entirely. Mobile games are 100%. You're in it every day. You wake up, you immediately check it. You're on your lunch break. You pull it out. You're watching videos. As soon as you forget about it, it's over. And they know that. They know that 100%. And as I said, I think that it's kind of something that is ultimately self-defeating because players will just burn out. So, I mean, that's like one really important thing, I think, for sure. It's not technically the same thing, but you know how a lot of live service games will have like, oh, like play this weekend and get double drops and play this weekend and get two times experience and this, this kind of like stuff like that? Like that stuff, I think, really undermines the integrity of the game very significantly in the long term. Like that stuff, like, like sure, that weekend, a bunch of people will turn up. But then I feel like then you're like, when you don't have that, now you're much less likely to play. And so then you get into this death spiral of like, okay, well, the only time people turn up is when you start turning on double experience weekends. Oh, no. He's talking about D4, bro. Man, he just had, he's got the shovel out. Like, he just keeps going, dude. He had the trillions of damn in the comet, the double experience. Oh, no. Rod really opened the floodgates with this shit. He should not have sent a shot, bro. Even just that, like, stuff, that, that's not even really to do with monetization, even. It's just like another thing where it's like a, it's an outside element outside of the gameplay. You're using marketing to push gameplay. Yeah, yeah, that shouldn't be there. And I, I really hate that stuff. And like, I mean, once again, another one of those things that in the long term, I think you is much better for the health of the game. I can't believe this Diablo-like maker would dare to judge Diablo 4. He made the f*** out of a Diablo-like. I'm not going to lie, ULD. I just want to say that I appreciate the genius of this. The idea okay. that you guys are going to be releasing the first three acts and then you are going straight into the end game because you guys want to make sure that in early access... The end game is what is getting played. The end game is what's being tested. What's the motivation behind that? Like, I, I feel like obviously part of it is somewhat a no brainer because POE is its end game. In a lot of cases, these games are right. their end game. In a lot of cases, what are you guys looking to accomplish for it? And what was the, you know, what, what was the mindset making such a intelligent decision? So it's funny because you say it's a no brainer, but it, it surprisingly took us a while to realize that uh, that's what we needed to do. Strangely enough, like we changed direction completely to this when we did the announcement for Settlers of Kalga and oh no shit it was that recent of a change so what happened was so like we obviously had a bunch of in-game plans that would make us, like, we, we had a design for what the in-game would be but we did the Settlers of Kalga announcement and that announcement was really huge and on it's the same so day as that announcement occurred yeah there was also a Diablo 4 announcement where they announced I think it was a class they yeah. were announcing and everyone was saying like oh you know Blizzard's making this expansion and it costs like $60 or whatever it costs and the, the amount of and the content they're making is like not even as large as this random POE one expansion that's coming out. He said the thing. He just said it. He just he like actually just said it. Holy shit! Oh man, Rod should not have tweeted that tweet. Like there was all this sort of stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw that, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, well, so first of all, like making a class is actually like a way larger amount of work. Oh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Than, okay, all right, we can all calm down. He's at, he's actually he's he's actually being kind here. Oh. Okay, dude. For a moment, I was like, "Holy shit, dude!" He's say he's actually saying that. Yeah. Okay. He put the put the barrels away. He's not sending shots. He's trying to. He's kind of giving them a break. Okay. All right. All right. Shots reverse, not fired. They go back in the barrel. Holy moly! Like honestly, when you actually compare the two in terms of the amount of work that goes into it, one of them is a lot easier. But then I was talking to Mark about this, and Mark was like, "Well, yeah, but so maybe they should be making more of the type of content like what we're making." And I was like, "Okay, never mind. Ah, oh, yeah, shots back on the menu, boys. Okay, I uh, know. Holy, oh my God, the roller coaster. We're going this way, and then it goes down, and ah, oh, right back up here. Don't do it to me again, dude. Don't, don't be. And then I told Mark to shut the f up and Blizzard's base. Like, yeah, what was he gonna say next, dude? I'm getting, I'm actually the roller coaster. You're killing me here." Well, you know, you're not wrong about that. Like, okay, just because something takes more work doesn't necessarily mean that, like, that's the right thing to be doing. Yeah. And then I thought, well, hang on, are we making the same mistake with PoE2? Like, we were barreling forward thinking, like, we have to finish this campaign before we can work on all this endgame stuff. And then I was like, well, hang on, like, 
why are we making all this content that's really hard to make when we could be making content that's honestly easier to make and probably the players will get a lot more satisfaction out of it like there'll be a lot more actual gameplay that comes you know it's like it's like is wait is he actually saying the reason that they focus so hard on in-game and poe too is because he watched blizzard make the mistake with the diablo 4 expansion that's what I'm getting out of this. I didn't think it was going to get this juicy at the end of this. Holy shit, dude. And you know the other fun thing about it, by the way, is that now, like, making the end game for PoE 2 is like going back to the, like, making PoE 1 leagues again, yep. except with <laughs> resources of the whole company all in one thing. So it's like making seven leagues concurrently, which is kind of a crazy thing, but yeah. um, it's been very fun. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun to work on that stuff. Is there is there anything <laughs> that you would like to say about Path of Exile 2? Or yes, please say, Jonathan, please say everything. Everyone needs to watch Darth Microtransactions, Twitch live stream, and YouTube videos. Like, comment, subscribe for more Minecraft Let's Plays. Please, I, I say that in the outro. Or anything you'd like to say to the audience for the end of this? I'm really happy with the work the team have done on the game. Like, it's just so, I, I think it's I think it's a good game. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to seeing what how people react to it. Like, I just want to see, like, you know, were we crazy this whole time, what we were making? Or did we actually, uh, do we have the right idea? You know, like, all the changes we've made, all the things we've done. Like, you know, I, I, I just want to see, like, you know, d does it actually... A player's actually going to love it, and I'm hoping they do. Huge mm -hmm. W of an interview. Family. Huge W of an interview. Family. 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 Very nicely done interview. Good to see sort of more of the concept around the game conversation instead of just very specific niche, like, you know, mechanic-based stuff. So that's kind of a conversation that I, I'm glad that was had. I can't see because the animal. Kitty, I love you, but sit on the lap or something. Or sit on the perch. Look, all of this that you see is yours except that dark place. You must never go there, okay? Have some Simba energy for a moment, please. Has been opening the box. Mr. Zack himself. Hold on. Oh no. He's gonna he's gonna brute force it. He's gonna spam the camera struggle. I like everyone trying to solve the way that they handle the camera. Speaking of boxes, how's Rex doing in this? Where's he at? That I'm doing something important, but actually I'm just opening the Pokemon trading card game and doing my wonder pick because I get a free one. God damn it, I forgot my wonder pick last night. Okay, we'll come back to that. <laughs> okay, there's a, I'm getting baited by this one. The best build. What is the best build in Path of Exile 2? Ah, here we go. All right, if anybody is telling you what the best builds are right now or any kind of concrete information that they'd say it is, is basically fact, ignore them. True. It's ridiculous. We know, we, we don't know anything. Do you understand that? Get that in your head. If anybody's presenting things as the best or whatever, you should they're clowns and you should ignore them <laughs> uh, well this one i definitely don't think is going to be good on paper and what we have. Yeah, what do you mean it's not going to be good this is the same shit i was thinking the second i saw you're telling me my brain went to a spot that immediately is not going to be good i'm already struggling I have so far it looks it looks really strong knowing nothing it, it just seems way too powerful there's no way leech is as good as it seems like looking at it from a poe one perspective it looks insane but it does instant leech seems ridiculous i don't know there's got to be something, some kind of bait with Leech here. And then here is the build I'm actually probably going to go. Holy shit, what are we looking at here? Like every single time I've seen someone play Mercenary, uh, the grenade does a bajillion damage. And all the footage you see, I, I called this out when we were watching the footage last time. All the footage I've seen of Mercenary, the grenades do like a, like a completely stupid amount of damage. This is Lily. She's a live streamer as well as YouTuber. You can find the link right here. Like, this is actually probably going to be disgusting, I'd agree. You know, anything that, like, splits off and explodes a million times in a little, in a little AoE is usually pretty insane. So I, I think it'll be good. It's just an idea. Just... How many of you guys are going Mercenary? Because I don't know, I don't know if I'm, I'm playing Mercurino. I think I'm definitely going Warrior. Like, a lot of, a lot of Mercs, huh? A lot of Mercs. Sork all day? Yeah, I think Chronomancer actually looks pretty fun. Where's Rax at here? Wait, he's, like, close to done, isn't he? Because he's got this part done. So he's got the backwards. He's got the clock done. I could reverse the tree. He's almost done. I just don't understand this. Oh my god, dude! Is it? Uh, holy moly! Someone call Hollywood. Holy shit! Someone call Hollywood, dude. Let's see who is online here. How about someone with one viewer? He's literally watching my video right now. You want? Let's raid someone with one viewer that's watching my video. Stick with Nick. Here you go. He's currently reacting to one of my videos. Go tell him what up. I'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, we'll look at some more PoE2 stuff. So that's about it, boys. Love you all. Catch you tomorrow.